different kinds of concerns and mobilization that are linked to the Rio Plus 20. One is the more direct link, which is about people and communities who are affected by climate change, by extractive processes, the mining industry, by land being taken over by corporations or even by the government for large projects. So that's one part, the direct part of the mobilization around it. And for example, in India, there, there are very large movements against some of these projects. For example, uh, in the state of uh, Orissa, uh, in India, there is a very large uh, mobilization against a company called POSCO and the displacement that will be uh, caused by it. In central India, there are large uh, movements as well as uh, linked to it uh, movements uh, involving the Maoists, uh, which involve uh, displacement because of mining. Uh, so th there are there are this direct kind of, uh, but uh, uh, there is also, and I think there has been less discussion, uh, at least outside our own context, uh, about uh, another aspect of climate change, which perhaps affects a much larger number of people, which is that uh, what we call the carbon space is limited. Uh, Capitalism, for its own interest, understands that the carbon space is limited and it will have to, at some point, seed the carbon space. It will have to look for alternatives that are not carbon-based in terms of energy. So the battle really today is that you have this limited carbon space. How long can the northern countries continue to hegemonize this carbon space. That's, that's the political battle that's taking place today. Now for a country like India, where on one hand you hear the whole success story of uh, liberalization and globalization, but uh, maybe not so many people understand that India is still a very, very poor country. You have more poor people in India than the whole population of Africa. Now these are people who for their development need require this carbon space, require a share of this carbon space. So the politics around the carbon space is also the politics of whether people in countries such as in India, in large parts of Asia, in large parts of Africa, will get a share and what kind of a share will they get of the carbon space. Now if uh, North America and Europe does not decrease its greenhouse emissions uh, immediately and exponentially in, in the immediate future, then there's a much lower amount of uh, available carbon space that is available. Now for Development needs of the people in poor countries is something that is paramount. Today, if you look at the uh, global climate justice movement, I think the key to that movement is to give a state to people to save the planet. Today, um, I would hazard a guess that a majority of the, for example, the Indian population does not have a stake in saving the planet. Why should I save, save a planet which does not give me anything? For me, the concern is that whether I can get the next meal. So, the link between a just society which provides me with the necessary conditions to live a fulfilling life has to go hand in hand with the climate justice movement. You cannot divorce the two movements. In fact, they should be part of the integral whole. And that's part of what many movements in India are trying to do. So explicitly, they are not often seen as a climate movement or a climate justice movement. But we would really argue that they are integrally part of the also the attempt by developing country governments including India to try to have a share of this carbon space. So there is the there is actually a real effort to try to do that. To the extent that they're able to also depends on other kinds of pressure they are under. 
but there are also other organizations like the uh, uh, network that I represent, the People Science Network. We uh, now across the country we have had series of uh, mobilizations uh, of uh, building capacity of actually putting people on the streets uh, to link to build a link between de the development needs of the people and the climate justice uh, issues. So for example, if uh, people in a remote village in India, they are being denied the minimum living conditions. That's part of the climate justice. And that's the link that we, we uh, some of us, so many of us are involved in also building, that we are part of the climate justice movement, but not just saying that you are not going to move towards an uh, increasingly carbon-dependent uh, economy, but also that there are developmental needs that need to be satisfied for us to build a just uh, society and a just world. Its own development, as I was saying, or its own continued uh, sustenance, is interested in saving the planet. In fact, they have much more to lose than most of us because they are the ones who control much more than we have. So they st the stake. But they are caught in a bind today where a just climate movement or a just climate solution goes against the essential logic of capitalism, which is overconsumption. What? Because the Rio summit is really going to be informed by the interests of Europe and, the, and North America, the developed countries. Uh, so it's clear that they're going to try to have a technical, uh, try a technical solution, a market-based solution to the climate crisis. It's important for us to engage with that solution as well. because. However much we mobilize at Rio, capitalism is not going to lie down and play dead. It's, it, it, it's, it's going to be still there. And there is a real possibility of creating another form of hegemony by control over technologies that they are going to promote, which are the technologies supposedly for uh, green uh, economic uh, growth. So it's important to engage with that debate, to enter that debate, to understand what are the solutions being offered, and to propose alternatives. And as a science movement, we do not discount the possibility of there being technological solutions which may be partial. So we are not saying, we will not say that we denounce all technological solutions. After all, human endeavor is also about has always been about finding ways around the contradiction between man and nature. The contradiction on man and nature does not start now. It started 10,000 years ago when settled agriculture started. And continuously, even before capitalism, human endeavor has tried to find technological solutions. The challenge today is whether those technological solutions are within the logic of capitalism or can we bring them outside the logic of capitalism to be a supplement to a transformated economic and political society situation? What does social justice mean mm -hmm. for everyone, for different sectors? When millions came out in the streets in Egypt, they were the main cha chant they were, 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 were shouting out the first few days was dignity, freedom, social justice. To come out and speak for social justice, that's, that is the fight against capitalism. That is the struggle against capitalism. That is people's recognition that there is no justice in, this, in, in their world. They do not live it, and they do desire it, they want it. 
But we have to concretize that struggle. We have to make it concrete. We have to make it close to what they are living. The people are very aware of who is uh, who's robbing them blind, and they're very aware of world powers. Very aware that there are global powers that are bleeding them dry. And they are very aware that there are people in their country who are now multi-rich uh, because they work hand in hand with these global powers. So that's on the way uh, that movements come together and try to formulate uh, alternatives and share that uh, formulation is, is one step ahead. Uh, I think we've come a long way. When, when, when I look back uh, years back, it's uh, and, and see where we are today, I think we are evolving mm -hmm. as movements. And so even before Rio, there's going to be conferences. There's going to be Durban, there's going to be in Egypt, we're going to have a conference in, in, in December where we're going to bring people from the Arab region as well as international people on the issue of social justice and democracy and okay. those links. So I think every step of the way that we can mm -hmm. um, look at issues, look at problems and formulate alternatives, I think it's one step into building a new world. Uh, and so Rio is part of that, definitely it is part of that. And it's